it's been a month since I last used ChatGPT. And during that month, I had some time to reflect for the next time I would re-engage ChatGPT. And one of those, one of those insights that I came up with was use ChatGPT to explain what's going on with very various things. So for example, we have now crossed the era where you have to read hundreds of books on C sharp, right? I specialized in C sharp for over 25 years. But we're now at a point where if you want to do C sharp or you want to do C plus plus and you have a decent baseline of experience in these languages. And when I say decent baseline of experience, I'm not talking about a quarter of a century in my case, but I'm referring to, okay, maybe you did read a few books or articles on C sharp or C plus plus or whatever the case may be. Just ask chat GPT to get you up to speed on the next set of pieces involving that. Use ChatGPT as an accelerant. Use artificial intelligence as an accelerant. We've crossed that threshold where you have to memorize or have the whole lexicon and canon of technical knowledge floating around in your head. Now, it's still useful if you immerse yourself in detailed information. That's still useful. But here's what I did. I was like, I have ran across articles that said, chat GPT, it can now do this. You can, if you have the mobile app, you can have it just hear your voice directly, right? And I do have the mobile app, by the way, but I'm using it in the browser because I do like browsers on desktop computers still. I mean, that's, they're much more productive in many things than using it on a mobile device. So I just said, okay, I'm not going to peruse hundreds of hundreds of articles, and I'm being, I'm, I'm I'm exaggerating there, but I'm not going to go back and try to find all those articles that try to tell what's going on with ChatGPT. I will ask ChatGPT directly. So here's the update. So I asked ChatGPT, what are the latest updates, capabilities, and limitations you've gained in the last sixty days? And I know the updates were actually in the last 30 days, but I thought I would just, you know, expand the scope of the question. And so ChatGPT then responded. It was like, you know, over the last 60 days, last two months, it can do image generation right here in the chat, right? It can do image generation right here in the chat. And it can improve, it has a better way of understanding the conversation. Now, you do have the thing called custom instructions that came out like two months ago, I believe, and I use those. I have my custom instructions loaded up to the hilt, you know, but uh, I do like that the database that that it used, uh, that has been used to train it has been upgraded to April 2023. That's definitely better than what it used to be when it was like September 2021. So got up to date. It can now browse the internet itself using a text-based browser. If anybody's used a text-based browser like Lynx on Linux or whatever, where you're just browsing the internet and it's just text, there are no images, there are no graphics, it's just the text of the website, then you know what I mean. Or if you use the, or if you watch my videos on RSS Reader, it's pretty much the same thing. All right, limitations. No, it doesn't access the internet in super real time like you would do if you were to do a Google or DuckDuckGo search query, right? Um, but it does access the internet on certain things so it can maintain some up-to-date information. That's cool. I really like that. And it doesn't interact with software systems on your computer or any other software systems other than the ones at OpenAI. So that's cool. Uh, language limitations. Everybody knows it uses English, right? One day it will be multilingual and, you know, we can talk to it in a variety of languages that have a richer set of aspects to them than English does.
I'm just saying. Sanskrit, Swahili, and a variety of other languages, they, they have some richness to them that you cannot approach in English. And no personal experiences or emotions, and I'm glad it, but that's probably based on my custom instructions because I have a very formal formal relationship with the chatbot, right? So I told it I don't want it to play around. So let's be straight up with the information. So then I asked about this paperclip icon because I thought that was very, very interesting. So if you click this, you go, it will pull up a file browser, right? You can, you can actually upload a file. I thought that was awesome. So, but I asked about it because it's like, you know, I just don't want to assume anything about it. So it's like, okay, so it told me that it can take an image and I already knew that it could accept images. Um, but, you know, this is the first time that I've talked to it about it. And you can also use images you upload to generate images using DALI. And then you can upload just plain text files, right? I really needed that months ago, but I'm glad it's here because that's going to speed a lot of what I do with ChatGPT up tremendously, tremendously. Audio files. So I do a lot of audio files. I do a lot of audio files. And so um, it's helpful to have uh, the ability to have ChatGPT go through my audio files because that's going to uh, create new possibilities for me personally in things that I do. And data files, oh man, do I do I work with data files? And this is going to be absolutely useful. Um, and so it wasn't able to go into the, the, the file size limitations, but I'm sure I'll run into that at some point. <clears throat> and I think this whole thing was set up to be more competitive with Claude AI. And so that's going to be useful there. And so I asked it a scenario-based question about audio and about Dali. And so, yes, it can convert your audio into text. That's super cool. And then you can um, have you can have it generate your images right in the chat session. Now, you see down here at the bottom, ChatGPT can make mistakes. Consider checking important information. So I hope this is true, but I'll test that at some point uh, in the future, the near future. And so I thought that was awesome, man. I thought that was awesome. And then, you know, I talked about copy and paste, right? Because, you know, in the past when we used ChatGPT, we were copy and pasting, you know, information right into ChatGPT. Hey, I like that I can I can uh, close the sidebar here. I mean, I think that's awesome, right? But um, now, it, but here's the thing. <clears throat> so whenever you uh, copy and paste information, there is always the possibility that you're going to lose some aspect of formatting, right? Even with a plain text file. So you can have a tab delimited file, but it has some spaces in there somewhere. Those spaces may get uh, washed out if they're leading spaces or... Something about the text box here, right? You, 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 if you go and you paste, right, right. There's something about the text box, based on the way it's designed, that could uh, put some limitations on that information that you're you're pasting in. But when you can uh, upload the file in its original format, and I ask ChatGPT, hey, is it better to copy and paste, or is it true? And I kind of, I already knew the answer, but I just wanted to see what it would say. Is it true that you're going to get better results if it's reading the, the original file directly, right? And of course, it's true, yes. If it's reading the file directly on the server, then not only does it see the file in its true fidelity, but it's able to handle the file more efficiently. It's faster. It's much faster, right? And I was curious, because this is always a, a, a huge concern, the token range. How much data can ChatGPT deal with in a conversation? So here I was, I was like, okay, maybe it was expanded. As far as ChatGPT know, that hasn't changed. So I was like, okay, if that hasn't changed, how does that impact, right, the files you upload? So ChatGPT said that 
when you upload files, that goes through a different process than the normal chat right here in the text box. So you're going to get more out of the chat by uploading, right? And combining the uploads with chats, right? And that's where I asked it here. I was like, if a person did really, they planned very well, did a really good plan in advance before they chatted, right? And didn't just chat on impulse, but you planned your chats in advance and you matched your chats up with file uploads, right? then could you get a better situation, a better result? And ChatGPT was like, yeah, you, you absolutely can. And so, you know, hey, and if I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video, right? You can always pause it. And so, but here's the thing. This is what I was wondering. Could you place your chat? So if the, the, the uploads work on a different process, right? And there's potentially better capacity as, as far as prompts and chatting with ChatGPT. And I'm not trying to hack the system or anything like that. Not at all. I just need to know what my, my possibilities are. Then could we put our prompts in the file upload? Right? And then it was like, yeah, your understanding is mostly correct. And I had to word the question in such a way where I wasn't putting words in ChatGPT's mouth, Right? I needed it to just be able to give me the true answer. And, and here's what it came up with, right? Uploading the file, if you upload the file a certain way, where you have the file marked up with comments and other expl explanatory information that goes along with the main content, right? But when you do that, it actually helps the conversation along in a much smoother way. So I think these changes are going to make ChatGPT far more use, useful. And I think they do keep it in alignment with what I've heard about Claude AI. I haven't been able to use Claude AI, AI because, you know, there's only so many of these subscriptions um, that a person is going to be able to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sustain or want to sustain, right? So I decided to keep with uh, ChatGPT. And so um, I have no opinion about Sam Altman or um, the, the board at um, OpenAI, um, you know, dislodging Sam, Sam Altman. And I hear that, you know, there's discussions about trying to um, put him back in place. I do have a comment, though, on the underlying story behind that, right? And my, my, my comment is this, right? That and hold on while I, I pull that, that browser tab. Give me just one second. So yeah, I did read these articles about OpenAI and the removal of uh, of Sam Altman, and I went and this one, so I kind of just browsed through these right over here. And I looked at this one in a little bit more depth. And I, I actually read the comments on all these articles that I read. So I not only read the articles, but I read the comments. But I went through this one in great detail. And um, and I, I read this one probably twice. And then I went through these comments. And I wanted to see what um, what were the insights you know, on this as well. Right? And so basically the gist of it uh, for me was that, you know, it is possible that, yes, um, artificial intelligence is being commercialized at the expense of research and development. And there is too much being thrown out there, not in terms of like how it's destabilizing industries and all this kind of, kind of thing, but I'm looking at it from the quality angle, right? I'm looking at it from the quality angle. What are we doing from a quality standpoint in terms of this technology, in terms of this tool, right? Because we don't want to get into a situation that we saw in the early 1980s where there were certain technologies that we still now use to this day in their, their modern form, right? Where the, the foundation of those technologies 
had caused us now to look for alternatives, right? And waste a lot of time with what you might call API, application programmer interface inflation, and very quick API obsolescence. Yeah, some would say that's just natural, but it's also unnecessary if you have a well thought out plan and a well thought out process that works in concert with good research and development and open standards, right? And so I don't know what is true or what is false in terms of the politics that's going on because there's a political aspect. I'm talking about, you know, corporate politics. There's a political aspect to a lot of this. But, you know, if we look at some of the the uh, aspects where we're talking about, you know, being on the level about what is going to be done with artificial intelligence and the commercial commercialization of artificial intelligence, right? And the research and development and making sure it's a tool that is going to work well for the broadest set of people, right? Then I would say that we do want to look at those aspects that's going to make the technology more reliable, more useful, and not turn into another waste of time in a a process that burns up decades of people's careers and lives, right? We, we want some really good stuff um, because we're at a turning point where we can really transform society. We can really transform our environments and make things work a lot better. But regardless of the decision that was made here, right, I do think that doing a control Z in this case can prove um, an issue only because now psychology does come into place, come into play that's going to make the situation at OpenAI uh, much more uh, uh, unpalatable, potentially unpalatable. And so when a decision like this is made, it has to be made, right? Uh, you can't un- you can't unmake it and expect a good result. If the original decision potentially isn't going to lead to a good result, you just got to live with that, right? And so, you know, this is a case where, okay, there's an opportunity to start another enterprise, right? And will the new enterprise be better than the previous one? Who's to say? But I think that moving forward is going to be the best course of action in this case. In order for things to um, uh, work out better in the end. So that's my opinion on the whole thing. And so I hope you found uh, this update on ChatGPT useful. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.